As an introvert, it's not easy to realize how wonderful you are. The world feels like a place that rewards extroverts, where being loud is mistaken for being confident and happy, where everyone has something to say, but nobody listens. In 2012, Susan Cain published the explosive New York Times bestseller, Quiet, The Power of Introverts, which famously named the problem of our preference for extroverts in the workplace. Since then, the book has been translated into 36 different languages and Cain has been interviewed everywhere as management discovered the value introverts bring to the workplace and that ignoring them would be a big mistake. Here is a list of a few people who are introverts. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Vibor. I am an executive agile and leadership coach based in Toronto, Canada. And this video is the third and the last part in a three part series about how to make people talk. The links to the last two videos are in the description and in the comments in case you want to check them out. As a reminder, everything I mentioned is going to be linked as timestamps in the video description if you're watching this on YouTube. So do feel free to skip around the video if you feel like it. For now, let's get started. Let's start by describing who introverts are and what's the difference between introverts and extroverts. The major difference between introverts and extroverts is not their level of shyness as commonly perceived, but the kind of situations in which they thrive and recharge their energy. An introvert loses energy from social interaction and an extrovert gains energy from social interactions. This is the reason why introverts prefer environments with low stimulation, such as with smaller groups of people, whereas extroverts tend to thrive in higher stimulation environments that may involve large number of people. Extroverts like to think out loud. They process information, explain and adjust their thoughts as they speak. Introverts, on the other hand, prefer to think and process thoughts internally. They speak low and slow, pausing frequently and using shorter sentences. And because of this reason, they get interrupted a lot by extroverts in meetings, making them think that it's a good idea to just keep Mom. Now that we know the differences between introverts and extroverts, let's see how it's like to be an introvert in a meeting. Imagine you are an introvert. You are sitting around a table in a meeting room with 10 other colleagues. Your manager asks everyone for their input on a governance issue which you're not familiar with. While most of your extrovert colleagues are calling out ideas, your heart begins to pound. Suddenly, the room starts to feel warmer. You still don't know what to say. Your palms are sweaty. And you are thinking, how on earth is everyone coming up with these ideas so quickly? After a few minutes of wrecking your brain, you get an idea worth sharing. But by the time you're ready to force yourself to speak, the discussion has already moved on to the next topic. Now hold your feeling right there. Let us know in the comments how you're feeling right now. When introverts are in the same meeting as extroverts, they may feel a little slow. As facilitators, it's therefore important to recognize these differences and take steps to ensure that everyone is able to fully participate, making the meetings truly productive. Here are five tips to help you do just that. Number one, make an eye contact. When requesting input during a meeting, try to make eye contact with the people you want to speak next. Introverts struggle to find the right moment to jump in. When the discussion is lively with people freely sharing their ideas one after the other, it can be difficult or uncomfortable for the introvert to cut in. They may have amazing ideas that they want to share, but every time they open their mouth, another voice beats them to it. This can be really exhausting when it happens several times in a row. When you make an eye contact with an introvert, it gives them a signal that now it's their turn to speak. Now, I'm not saying that you should stare at people making them feel pressured to respond. Just a quick two to three second glance before you move on to the next person is more than enough. It will help you form a connection with each participant and remind them that you value their input. Number two, five minute rule. Research shows that people who do not speak within the first five minutes of the meeting are unlikely to speak for the rest of the meeting, which is pretty scary. 
if you ask me. So the idea is to try and get people contributing within the first five minutes of the meeting. Now, there are gazillions of ways to go about doing that, but the easiest way is to ask everyone to provide a 60 second intro about themselves. Now, if you already know who the introverts are in the group, I suggest you start with them. Number three, use paired conversations. You must have noticed an increase in the breakout sessions in meetings nowadays. Almost every online tool has this feature called breakout rooms. But have you ever wondered why trainers and facilitators look for opportunities to send people to breakout rooms? This is because people who feel uncomfortable talking in front of the larger group feel quite at home when given a chance to speak in a smaller group of one to two people. And the reason for that is it is difficult to withdraw from a peer conversation. So use breakout rooms. Number four, do not expect perfection. Now, introverts love to think. This love, this passion to think, often leads them to overthinking and perfectionism. Now, I'm just going to guess a random number here, and if I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments. Almost 90% of the time, we do not need perfect ideas in a meeting. So as a facilitator, remove this wrong assumption by explicitly stating that you are not looking for perfect ideas. You are looking for a conversation. Half-baked ideas would do as well. Number five. Look out for interrupting extroverts. Now this is more common than you might imagine. Because extroverts contribute more frequently and with more volume than introverts, it makes it easy for the participants to see an extrovert's contribution as more valuable regardless of the content. So be on the lookout for extroverts who interrupt introverts in the meeting to explain something that introverts actually know more about or when they try to take credit for ideas generated by introverts. This is a communication issue more than a personality issue. So if these problems keep happening, ask your best communicators to lead by example. Ask for input from everyone at the table and correct those who habitually interrupt. For tips on how to communicate as a scrum master or an agile coach, check out this video on YouTube. Also, starting new year 2021, I will be posting longer agile and productivity specific tutorial videos on YouTube, which I can't post on LinkedIn due to size restrictions. So if you haven't already, then please consider subscribing. This ends this video and the video series on how to make people talk in meetings. If you like this video, then please do not forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, please do not forget to provide your valuable feedback in the comments. I'll see you in the next video.